Hello YouTube, this is Bill from VacLab and I'm going to show you here how I managed to go and get airflow measurements from power nozzles such as this Heritage 2 Legend, this G4, and this G6. Hi Miko, how you doing there in Finland? So what I started out with a few years ago was the ubiquitous and easy to use Baird airflow meter but unfortunately it only shows generic numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and you don't necessarily know exactly what those mean so sometimes it can be difficult to figure out exactly how much CFM cubic feet per minute your vacuum actually can generate unless you're able to translate these numbers into something which you can with something like this this is a GM 8901 anemometer and it has all different kinds of nifty things you can actually do like I'm switching it down here to feet per minute although you can choose other units and we're in the United States so I'll switch it over to Fahrenheit it can tell me the airflow speed and temperature and from that I can go and convert it with a simple formula to cubic feet per minute. But what do you do with that when you want to measure one of these nozzles? Well, you have to go and have some kind of an airflow box to put this thing on top of. And that's where this comes in. This is the least expensive airflow box that I've ever actually seen. And it's actually just a plain cardboard box. Nothing really that special about it. And it actually had furnace filters in it. I think MERV 7 grade and you can see it's very simple. It's probably a little too tall but here's the opening where the vacuum would actually sit and here is a two inch opening down here where I put my anemometer in. And then if you're wondering what the wood pieces are over here for, this actually fits down in here because let's face it this is cardboard and if I put a 24 pound Kirby on here this cardboard box is going to crush so if you decide to make one of these things you'll probably have to have some extra support in here otherwise when you put the vacuum down on here it'll just simply crush your box and I also want to emphasize that this is not for suction or water lift tests when you go and take your detector fan for your anemometer and put it up to your detection hole if you happen to accidentally block the hole with your hand like say you're pulling oh, 137 CFM from a Kirby Centria 2 that I have upstairs the box will actually crush and the sides will simply just crush completely in and you'll have a collapsed airflow box and then you won't be able to use it anymore so that'll be no fun so bottom line is very inexpensively you can get a cardboard box and see I've used some packing tape here to kind of create a good seal around here and this is just a two inch round hole that, that's cut out and it's just a very simple type of a box that's been fully sealed with with packing tape ordinary packing tape and with this you can do very very precise airflow box measurements and I'll show you how to do the measurements. I'll probably put a Kirby on top or maybe I'll put a Ricard on top of the box or something in a later video. And you'll actually be able to see how to go and make very, very precise measurements. And this gauge right here is actually pretty good to about a quarter of a CFM. It can do measurements accurate to within um, less than 1% air. And that's really pretty good enough. So until next time, bye-bye.